Let's do this. Hey, I want to say, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you're a new viewer, pull up a chair, pull up your knitting. Let's get to know one another. Leave a comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, let's just do this, all right? Uh, I'm going to kind of wing it. Don't have show notes per se. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this under my 30 minutes. And as you may already know, this is number three in my podcast, which has a name now. And I'll talk about that at the very end. Um, about my crochet work, about me learning to knit, uh, about whoever's knocking on the door. Yes! Yes, I am. What do you need? Um, what Don't you have crayons? I bet you have tons of crayons. Ones, like, the ones I used are the ones from the twistables, and I can't find a crayon that matches this. Okay, we'll go get the twistables. Okay, that's Carter, by the way. Now, what was I saying? Okay. All right, well, let's just get this party. Oh, this is a number three. That's what I was saying. This is number three of my podcast, which now has a name, um, about my crochet work, me learning to knit, my art quilt that I do, and I'm working on one that has a deadline coming up, and I'll share a little bit about it. Um, I also, um, and just any other creative endeavors, um, which I call the Corota University School of Art which I have been cutting classes. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, it's just about what I do and me trying to say hey and reach out to the other knitting and uh, or just general yarn head, what I call yarn head, community. So, um, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, a few of the podcasts that I'm enjoying and uh, um, and I think that's it. So I'm going to just kind of jump right in and get started. Started. I actually have a finished object. Yes, I do. And I finished it in two days. I could have done it in one, but I started it very late. And it's a gift for my aunt. Um, I had, she wears hats even in the summer. Uh, she says she's very cold and so I have two of them uh, one's already kind of wrapped up uh, I don't think I've shown it here but I, this was a very easy pattern it's a little loose head beanie and it's a free pattern that was called not sure but I will put the name here <laughs> um, But it was really quick. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I got paper stuffed in it, so, and I'm gonna wrap it and put it in the envelope and send it off to her. But uh, this was made with, uh, I believe, a cascade yarn. I believe it was, and then I can't tell you offhand what it was. But it only took one skein, and uh, it's a real quick knit. And again. I'm admiring how well my stitches line up mm -hmm. and even my seam my seam is looking really good so um, it was crocheted in the round but the band really neat uh, uh, the way the band was done when I got to the band I just kind of did a row of chain stitches and would come back and connect it to the hat and then you know, chain back and then chain forward. That was really cool. Uh, I like that. I like the way that was done. So, um, that's the uh, work for my aunt. Aunt Frances. And uh, I have two aunts. Um, and an uncle. And, uh, and my mom, of course. Yay, my mom. And 
don't, not sure what to make for my mom yet. Uh, she has a little, not not full blown Alzheimer's. I guess probably not even Alzheimer's. I'm uh, we're gonna call it early stages of dementia. And anything new, she swears up and down it's not hers. So I don't know how to go about making something for her and presenting it to her. Even if I present it to her later, she swears up and down it's not hers. So that's an interesting um, dilemma. But I would like to make something for my mom. Um, uh, yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. And uh, but not sure what. Maybe a hat. Maybe even even if she thinks it's not hers, if she goes out and it's cold, she would still wear it. Uh, she lives with my sister, so, uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what I make for her. I haven't made it yet. I've been trying to figure out uh, what she really needs and, and would want and would really use, benefit from. So anyway, that's my one finished object. I am still plugging along on Carter. Um, you just saw him, just met him, um, on his sweater. I ran out of yarn. And I had to go get some new yarn, and it took me a while um, to get over to Hobby Lobby. And uh, this was made from the yarn that was given to me. So I was really kind of glad that it's still being made. And this is the back. And I have this out here to show that this is the outside because I kept forgetting which was the outside. Mm -hmm. And I have the front done. And part way the sleeve. And this is where I ran out. I did, I have, of course, the sleeve to go uh, to finish this one and do the other sleeve. And then the ribbing around the neck. And then seam it together. And he will have a new sweater. And, of course, it's all acrylic yarn. Um, and I'm doing the sleeves in the solid color, so I don't need any more of this light gray. And, uh... So that's that. So I have made progress on it. I should finish it by the next time I um, do another podcast. And as far as part, I was trying to do three a month, but, uh, and I had actually one, I had one uploaded and ready to go, but I kept watching it and I really wasn't satisfied with it. I was trying to show, um, I did some dyeing, um, for the quilt that I'm working on. So I was trying to show that process and it was just, it was just jacked up. So I, I let it go and uh, made myself delete the whole episode. And so this is actually a redo. And, um, and this is, I have to get used to now recording these when people are around my husband has retired, recently retired, and we haven't yet found him a hobby yet, so he's going to be around, and so I'm actually recording this in the evenings, which is different, and everybody is home, it's on a Sunday, um, uh, October 30th, that I'm actually recording this, and it will probably be tomorrow, or Tuesday before I actually uploaded and uh, so learning curve learning curve learning curves so uh, that's my work in progress my finished object my work in progress I will show you uh, my knitting I was actually going to make this a cow Oops. <laughs> my boss trying to get away from me and
it was a cow I think using all the knit stitch which I think makes if you use all the, of the knit stitching you actually create the garter stitch is that correct I think it's correct but I told you I had gone into Hobby Lobby which I rarely rarely ever go um, but these are knitters pride that they're and they had a their selection of knitting and crochet items was pretty outstanding and impressive I guess and I noticed that also about Joann's as well and Michael's I guess certain times of the year they expand their selection and then they let it dwindle down to nothing and then they go through expanding but Hobby Lobby's had a line of Knitter's Pride items and also their Clover line which they carry but it was really expanded in terms of Clover stuff you know knitting and crochet so these are my Knitter's Pride needles they're acrylic um, I kind of like that I mean I like working with them um, of course all of this is new to me my other ones were bamboo I think and they were Chiyogu, Chiyogu bamboo um, so far I've been working with the fixed needles circular needles I was working with the straight metal and I kind of abandoned that it's okay um, I am trying to decide as a new knitter how to invest in sizes and selections. I know I'm not a fan of chunky yarn, although there is a chunky yarn at my local yarn shop that I saw last time I was there, which was about a month ago, that I've been dreaming about, that I think about. It's by Malabrigo, and she had a cow that was made out of one skein, and I thought, okay, I could do that. Um, I could do one skein of, because you know it's a little pricey, and um, but it was the dye, it was the color, the intensity of that dye. Oh my gosh, it was like uh, vibrating with me. You know what I'm saying? It was just whoa, and I'm like. I don't know what dyes they use or their dyeing process. I know they have it on lockdown because it is just it's radiant. It you can almost hear it, hear sound from it. It's um, really interesting uh, dye that they on their yarns. But anyway, I'm getting carried away. But this was going to be a cow, my first knitted object, and then I decided no, it's not going to be my first knitted object. This is just practice. This yarn is so incredibly soft. Like, it's the softest yarn I've ever used. And I thought, this needs to be for a baby or a child. So, um, it is Yoth, Y-O-T-H. And I don't remember what that stands for, but it's a brother and sister company. Uh, and this yarn is the Big Sister yarn. I have four skeins of it. Uh, each skein is about 115 yards. Got it in a yarn box subscription. And uh, uh, I really didn't want to make the patterns that um, they had, even the knitted patterns. I really didn't want to make, use it for that. So I am thinking about making something with it. I'm going to frog this and make something uh, for a child with it. It's just, I mean, it's really, truly is the softest yarn I've ever felt. Um, Yoth, Y-O-T-H. Um, and this is the big sister. And uh, it's, it's like baby soft. It's, and the knitted, once it's knitted, it's it, it's softer than it is, you know, in the ball. I mean, I just, you know, if I was knitting in public with this, I'd be like, oh, feel this to total strangers. I would be. It's that, that soft. So anyway, um, that's my knitting progress. I feel very comf more comfortable with um, the knit stitch 
and how I'm holding my yarn. You know, I'm doing it continental. And um, a friend, uh, Therese, uh, helped me. She gave me a way that she holds her yarn, wraps her yarn around. And that, I like that a lot better. So I've been doing that. And it's also helped with the purl stitch, which I was absolutely hating. Um, I was trying to do some stitch, maybe the seed stitch, where you knit, purl, knit, purl. Couldn't keep up with one or the other. I was like, did I just purl or did I just knit? So anyway, um, I abandoned that one. But I am feeling more comfortable with, with that. Uh, you know, like I said, it wasn't the automatic love, like crochet, but I do feel like my um, skill is getting more satisfactory in that I could actually knit uh, an object. Um, the only thing I need to watch, of course, which I guess everybody still that knits has to watch, is dropping stitches. Uh, I don't know how to repair yet. I've seen YouTube videos of it, but I think I would actually need to do that in person, I think. Um, I found went to a knit group since our, my last podcast. Uh, it's at a library in the area. Uh, and then I discovered another knit group in the library that is my branch library um, close to me that meets on Tuesdays uh, during the day. So uh, I may be joining them. Uh, I know uh, I have one friend in the group and she's the one that told me about it. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, substitute some um, uh, knitting in person with uh, my online community uh, and because uh, I am pretty obsessed with this and this is how I like to spend my time as opposed to cleaning and yard work and all those things that people need to do. So anyway, uh, that's my knitting progress. What else do I have? Let me look at my notes. I did make quick notes. Um, oh, I guess I need to also tell you where I can be found since I was talking about my online community. I am on Facebook. Um, my uh, studio page is called Studio Corona. Hey, I was uh, saying. <clears throat> I do have a um, Facebook page um, for my art art expressions um, for my artwork. It's called Studio Corona. Um, my Facebook personal page is Karen R. Davis. Um, that's my birth name. I go by Corota though. My um, Instagram page is Studio Corota. And um, what else? I think that's... Oh, I blog. I blog at uh, on a blogspot blog, and that is also Studio Corota at blogspot.com. So, that's me, and that's where I can be found. And I am on Ravelry under... Karen Davis, I think. No, I take that back. Corota 2. Corota 2 is my rivalry name. <clears throat> Excuse me, all of a sudden I got a frog in my throat and I don't have anything to drink. I think that is a no-no in, in the podcast world. You always have a cup of something, right? Anyway, um... <clears throat> I am, as of Tuesday, that's a self-imposed deadline, I am putting away all my yarn as much as I possibly can to concentrate on a quilt that I have to have finished by the end of December for an exhibit going up in January. And part of <clears throat> the quilt will involve these little things. They're called hexagons. And if you see the back is white, that's paper. I get these little pre-cuts. And I guess if I had a circuit or something, a cutting, I could do them myself. But I don't make that many enough to really do that. 
and this is a take on a traditional pattern called grandmother's flower garden if you've seen my Instagram um, feed um, a few weeks ago yes a few weeks ago I did a rough sketch of the quilt uh, that I will be making that will have these as uh, representing abstract flowers but I have a hundred of these made. I have maybe a hundred or two hundred more to go. And what I will do, actually when they're all made, I will sew them, hand sew them, with a whip stitch together. And they will be connected. And these will represent abstract flowers uh, in a vase uh, and in a field. <laughs> So I am making that. So I have to really kind of focus. Uh, I've made, I've dabbled, but I've actually made with intention uh, one quilt, which was a collaborative project that I did with another artist um, by the name of Alonzo Davis. And that piece was really, really, I, um, it was something that I had sketched long ago. And uh, it was just seemed perfect to, perfect time to bring it into fruition um, uh, so anyway I'm going to talk about it because I don't uh, I'm not going to interject a, yes I will if I learn how to do it I'll interject a picture of it now okay so um, <laughs> um so I have to have a self-imposed deadline and reduce my yarn projects. I will finish Carter's sweater and then I have one other um, project uh, that is a more complicated and challenging shawl. It's a shawl for a friend that I've started uh, at least last year and um, it's, it's gorgeous. It's also by one of my favorite designers which I can't think of the name. So I will put it here. Um, so that will be the only uh, project that I will fit. No, I take that back. I also have a shawl, the Pacific Rim shawl, which seems to be endless. I showed it my first episode. So I will also work on that. And those would be the only two projects that will get my attention. Even though I'm dying to cast on my first, I think I have settled on my first, what will really be my first knitted project. And that is, I'm going to see if I can show you, I don't know how this will work. Pure Joy by Ho Ho Joji Locatelli. I know I'm probably saying her name right, wrong, but can you see that? Can you hear the noises of the kids playing outside? <laughs> well, anyway, that's the pattern. I saw it on the, uh, the podcast of Two Sisters, and the name of the podcast is the bookish knitters maybe I hope that's it if not I'll put it here <laughs> um, anyway I saw it there and I fell in love with it and I thought um, if you saw my second podcast you saw the yarn the yarns that I'm going to be using to get me through winter so I'm going to try it with these wild, vibrant colors and not the subdued uh, looking colors, which I do like neutrals, um, that you see in uh, uh, in her uh, Pure Ravelry Joy, page. I'm hoping, will be my first actual real knitted scarf, uh, shawl with the um, bright colored yarns that I have um, that I showed in episode two. 
And that, oh, no, 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 acquisitions, acquisitions. I do have that. I looked over and thought, oh, what is this? I didn't have that on my notes, see? Um, I found, uh, I don't buy, uh, subscribe yet I have to crochet or knitting magazines, but I'm always looking in the grocery store for something um, that kind of has my vibe in it in terms of the layout and the patterns that are in there. I don't want to buy just for one pattern. I, I just, that's just a waste to me. So, um, I, when I can probably find that one pattern on Ravelry or whatever and buy it that way, I, I that just seems more, um, more like something I would do. But I did find Interweave Knits, um, in my grocery store and, um, uh, I really liked the aesthetics of this magazine and the you know um, I found it very informative I love the patterns I can see myself making at least over 50% of the patterns included and then there was one I'd never heard of or seen is knitters magazine um, yeah that's what it's called and I again I liked the feel and layout and patterns um, in this magazine as well. So um, those are my finds or discoveries. I've not yet found a crochet magazine, um, but I'm looking at, I've not seen it in our stores, but uh, Happily Hooked. I am on their Facebook page and um, kind of like the vibe on it. And so I'm thinking about looking at uh, at that, see if I, I, that subscription. Um, if you have any recommendations, you know, give me a shout out if you find a crochet magazine that uh, you think is pretty cool. Um, then the other, my last acqu uh, acquisition um, was actually a gift and uh, from a good friend uh, along time friend who lives in Ohio who sent me some yarns that she didn't like the color of um, and um, I'm the recipient I knew they were coming but you know it's always like Christmas when you get yarns in the mail for me it is but she sent me four skeins of boutique unforgettable in parrot the colorway parrot and I got like I said I got four skeins of it not sure what I'm gonna make <clears throat> but who cares right so <clears throat> yeah and I know from um, listening to podcast people who use um, red heart like really like uh, speak highly of unforgettable so um, and I had been wanting to try it based on that I'm getting hoarse again so excuse me for the you know not having anything to drink or any water but um so I got that in the mail one skein of a red heart with love in the colorway of autumn she sent me a knitting book for dummies and these are great books took me a long time to warm up to that for dummies <laughs> but they are really good books and uh, so I've not read this one yet uh, not read, looked through it but I'm hoping it will help me embrace that whole knitting vibe then um, what's that doing in there my glue sticks for that I use in my uh, making my hexagons <clears throat> then uh, she also sent me <laughs> I'm gonna show you this this was the real uh, reason she mailed mailed this to me first I'll show this this is a hollowed out ink pen mm -hmm. and 
For those of you who use the item I'm about to show, you may be kind of guessing, coming close to guessing what she sent. Yarn runs through here, okay? And I'm not really sure why, but that's the purpose of it. Then she sent me two of these, different sizes. And if you use these, you really know what she sent me, right? <laughs> yep, Kelly, my friend in Ohio, is a loom knitter. And this was one of her beginning looms. It's a sock loom and a small scarf loom, I am told. And I am dying, dying, dying to try it, but I can't be distracted until I get this quilt fixed, quilt finished. Um, so I have put this off until the first of the year. Hmm. Okay. That was my computer. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm putting this off until the first of the year to try. And, uh, so I will be loom knitting <laughs> or at least giving it a try and probably socks yes as opposed to a scarf and uh, that is what really um, drew my love to want to even learn to knit was the socks even though I um, I like the look of cro uh, knitted socks I know you can crochet them and I've not tried to crochet socks, but the knitted socks. And also I like, uh, I love shawls and uh, I like the appearance of some knitted shawls. And I thought, oh, let me, I've got to do it. I've got to learn. I can't just say, you know, keep ignoring them when those patterns pop up on Ravelry. Um, so that was that. That's why I'm really drawn to learn to knit. The, other, the reason that I learned later is that because I want to also learn to do sweaters, um, thus I'm trying out Carter's sweater first, um, that it takes less yarn um, to knit than crochet. So that that's a plus too because you have to buy so much yarn, especially for plus sizes. Um, and if I want it to be a nice quality yarn, you know, uh, less yarn is better. So that's one reason I decided to also just jump in and learn to knit. So, um, but thank you, Kelly, for the acquisition. You made my month of October, which was actually looking very slim because um, of the uh, car wreck uh, that uh, totaled our vehicle. <laughs> So, I was kind of scared to even spend any money and still kind of scared to spend money until we replace the car, um, which is anxiety inducing in and of itself to go car shopping. I don't look forward to it. So, um, we'll be doing that soon. Anyway, or before the year is out, uh, hopefully. Because <laughs> uh, I don't do cold weather and the weather is turning, although it's been beautiful beautiful these last few weeks beautiful anyway beautiful so anyway that's my show for today oh I do have a name right and I hope to be getting my custom logo and masthead from my brother Karen Yagu you need to get with it I know you can whip it out in no time uh, anyway, um, the name of my show will be The Yarn Crow. Yes, The Yarn Crow. I like crows, and um, it just seemed appropriate. I had a list of names that I put up for vote uh, in two different uh, Facebook groups. Yarn Crow was the one that got the least, <laughs> actually got no votes. <laughs> But I liked it the best. Uh, some of the other ones I had was Yarnatic, as in Fanatic, uh, Yarn Alley, um, Yarnishings, as in Furnishings, but Yarnishings, uh, Yarn Spirit, um, uh, 
yarn shiki, as in dashiki, but yarn shiki. Um, anyway, <laughs> those were some of my suggestions. Uh, the ones that got the highest vote was Yarn Alley, um, uh, Yarnishings, and Yarnatic, and I think Yarn Spirit came in fourth. But anyway, I went with Yarn Crow. It just uh, seemed to uh, appeal to me, I, uh, to my, uh, I call myself a peasant woman, uh, even though uh, a peasant woman who uh, with queenly qualities. How about that? Uh, the queen title has followed me since the 80s as a kind of running joke. Um, but anyway, uh, I used to be at, in some circles known as Queen Garota or Garota just the queen. Um, uh, or just queen at one time. <laughs> so it's been a running joke anyway, but uh, I do kind of uh, consider myself a, a, you know, just a down home kind of girl and uh, uh, so anyway that's that so I will upload this get it edited and hopefully see you in episode 4 in about uh, mid November mid November yeah I'll do two a month that seems to be my rhythm um and if I get work up to three a month, which is my goal, we'll just say rah rah, uh, go team. So, anyway, I'm gonna let you go and peace and love and soul. Uh, that wasn't very original, peace, love, and soul. That's Don Cornelius. Some of you are going Don who, but anyway, that's okay. Um, but peace, and uh, I'll see you. Bye bye.